So type hints have completely changed how developers write Python code. Instead of having to rely completely on doc strings or developer documentation on the website for even the tiniest bits of information, we can now look at the code itself or use the tools that we have to get the information right at our fingertips. No context switching. What's even better is when our code editors do it for us. The Python extension for Visual Studio Code gives us information about the methods and modules that we're using. And in this latest update, the July 2022 update, the team has taken it up a level. Now you can see type hints directly next to your variables and functions. Let's dive in a little bit more. But before we do that, I want to make sure everybody's on the same page when it comes to type hints. Type hints were released in Python 3.5, and they were added as a way to standardize how we statically type our code. Now, if you know anything about Python, you don't have to add type hints to your code, but it does give you a little bit of information about what you're working with, and it can help the tools that you're using. To create a type hint, basically you just create that object, and then you add a colon, or in the case of a function, you add a, a dash and greater than sign, and then you add what the type is of that object, followed by the rest of what that object is. Now, the proposal authors noted that in doing this, it was going to open up Python code for easier analysis, refactoring, and even code generation, and that IDEs would be able to use it for a lot of great things. In Visual Studio Code, type hints, as well as other bits of information, can be seen when we're creating an object or while we're hovering over an existing object. The Python extension added two new optional ways. So now you can actually inlay the type hints next to the code that it references. Let's check out this example I made. Here's a simple address book app. The module address book uses Python data classes, which uses typing to declare how the class should be built. Now, if we go over to main.py, this is using those data classes. We'll define some person objects, shout out to my team, and we'll add them to a team object. Next, we'll create a function that gets a link to each team member's Twitter account. That way, if we ever add someone new, they can quickly make sure that they're following everybody on the team. Then we'll head over to the Python extension. You can find that in the extensions tab. In order to use this feature, you're going to need Python extension version 2022.10.0 or higher. We'll make sure that everything is up to date, and then we're gonna open the command palette and select Preferences, Open Settings, JSON. Down in the settings, we're gonna add two values, Python analysis, inlay hints, function return types. Make sure you set that value to true. And then the other one is Python analysis, inlay hints, variable types, also set to true. Now that first one, function return types, enables the type hints that appear at the end of a function or a method. And the second one are those variable type hints that we see right after we've created a new variable object. Just a reminder, this doesn't change your code. It just adds information to the interface and it eliminates the need for having to hover just to see what type of object you're supposed to be providing. That said, the hints that are there are valid Python code. So if you do want to type your code out, you can just type exactly what you see and there. This wasn't the only feature added in July. We also added support for setting up Visual Studio Code for Jupyter Notebooks. My teammate Sarah has more on that, so be sure to check out her video. And you can find more about both of these updates and even more changes on the Microsoft Dev blog. There will be a link in the description below to that article. But I want to know, are you going to use this feature? Let us know in the comments below, or let us know what Python extension feature you'd like to see pop up next. And make sure you're subscribed to the Visual Studio Code channel 
That way when it comes out, you'll be the first to know.